decided to go with Uldar first. Uh, we were there anyway, so it was easier. So let's interact. Uh, some of these cutscenes are voiced, so just a heads up. Behold, tis the Sultana Nanamo herself! And Roban as well! Hark you, souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore. Hurrah! Rauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold. Where by the grace and glory of Naldar, have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered? I speak of Uda! There, at the Flame General's back, flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garlians make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, Monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you! Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames! Seek not to prosper from Uldar, but to restore her to prosperity! As the realm prospers, so shall Uldar! As Uldar prospers, so shall her people! Yah for Uldar! Together we are one! Your grace. Raoban? People of Ulda, I, Nanamo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Uldar lies in the health, 
happiness and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulthar, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nanamo! Glory to the South Adder! For victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! Forsooth! The time is now! I believe! If you'll permit me, Alfie, no. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. The Uldans have long, have long history of conflict with the Amaltra, the beast tribe that worships the primal Ifrit. Judging by your looks of distaste, I take it you have encountered them. The Uldans do not shy from confrontation. If aught threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with, Inf uh, so have they dealt with Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he is stoked to life. Yet, he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quiet these past five years, the Garleans have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Uldar has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanate's coffers are bottomless, and even assuming they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Amalja are summoning him with ever-increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Uldans send their forces to smite the Primal, and though uh, they invariably succeed, each victory is brought with blood. It is a war of attrition, which they cannot well sustain. Small wonders, then, that the Immortal Flames are eager to, re eager to recruit more members. As such, a desperate hour and adventure of your experience would be a most welcome addition to their ranks. Right. Now let's head to Gridania. Save the best for last. Also, it'll be cheaper to teleport to Gridania from here. in the other area. Uh, there's an area in the Conjurer skill that you'll sometimes go to for uh, this stuff. I lost my son to the Calamity. Three seed seers are all together. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Our forebears were once strangers in the Twelves Wood, fearful of the Green Wrath. They hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gridania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, 
and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Do you see the Gridanian standard? There, hanging behind the Elder Seed Seer. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizen. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the Elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its war of conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance, that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixul have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could the walk the high roads itself. without fear. On this day, Five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? The destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action, I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder Standard.
And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children! Woods will be done! It's up to us to protect the forest! All the elementals! Fancy meeting you again. The Gridanians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Ixal are qu unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition and wont to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Silps, by contrast, are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent, and have long been on friendlier terms with the Gridanians, until recently at least. Alas, they have grown aloof, a change observed at roughly the time they summoned the primal Ra Raumo. Rauma. Ramu? Ramu, that's the one. The Gridanians have no love for war and they consider open conflict a last resort. Though they clash with the Ixil ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self-defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. Twelve's wood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the wood and thereby the power of the elementals will put an end to their woes. Yet how long will that take? Centuries, I wager. Meanwhile, the Ixil will continue their incursions, spurred by on by Garuda and her insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gridanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to an all-out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How valuable might the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them, then? then. Alright, I'll save the best all are. Here's who's in the Remembered Service. Be equipped. The Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. The Garleans are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Yeah. 
Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. The Crimson Field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the Black Longship represents a pirate vessel. When the Galian Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our Grand Company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilfir's bloody executioners. And together, we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartino. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. Much as the beast tribes have. A small wonder. Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. It has been five long years since the calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Yet still the wounds of the calamity fester and weep. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore, seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fish buck the bastards. The Sahagin have risen? While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth kobolds who push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crush against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Galian Empire. Even now the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded. Yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the beast hordes and the Empire both. And see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom, and stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well, a crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, Gather beneath the undying Crimson Standard, and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the Navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves, till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! And the Melvin! Gather the lads! Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral! Fancy meeting you again.
As Stadwell mentioned in her address, Limsa Liminsa is plagued by two beast tribes. The first are the Fishlight Sahagan, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the Kobolds, who dwell beneath the earth and take the primal Titan for their god. As the beast tribes' presence weren't, uh, if the beast, as if the beast tribes' presence weren't enough, weren't troublesome enough, the Galians have also chosen to erect a fortress right in the Lamincens' backyard. And that is to say, naught of the internal strife. As a nation of pirates, there is no end of the blood to the blood feuds between the various factions. And while they fight amongst themselves, the Galians wet their blades and watch. If the Lomensons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside, and the primal threat dealt with once and for all. To this end, I expect that they will soon take decisive action against the Beast Tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom Standard will be drenched a deeper shade of crimson ere long. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. But will you sail with the Admiral? Scarlet, this is Minfilia. You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final Remembrance Services is now concluded? A moment ago, you say? What a coincidence. Jesting aside, I trust you you remember our guests from the Grand Companies. Well, delighted though we are to have them here at the Waking Sands, it would not do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Now, the best part is that I didn't um, intend it this way, but... We're in Limsa, so we can go and use the ferry to get to uh, the Waking Sands. So, naturally, as I said in the last one, I'm um, going with Maelstrom. 100%. I just prefer Maelstrom. Um, but, you know, uh, you, as they said, you don't, once you pick one, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to stay with it. You can actually effectively do them all. Um, and there's actually a point in um, your progression through the Maelstrom where they say you can go and try out the other Grand Companies. Um, should you wish. Though you do have to like progress with all of them individually. to the waking sands. Alright, Ophelia. Welcome back, Scarlet. Were the Grand Company leaders words as illuminating as you'd hoped? I, each nation is best beset with problems. I trust you see now why your services are in such demand. Would that there were more of you, Scarlet. But you must be tired from your journey. Why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind is made up, pray give the Grand Company office your answer. The gods only know what grand company our adventurer friend will keep. <laughs> the wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard-waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Well, of course they were standard waving rallies. 
Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the Beast Tribes and their Primals do little to alleviate the pain. So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I need to find it. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say, we will see eye to eye. I should hope so. M my lady! We are to escort you! Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. Alright. Let's quickly grab this one. How was the Admiral's speech? Ah, but you need not explain that you stand before me now is answer enough. You have resolved to join the Maelstrom, have you not? Yep. That's the spirit, Lass. With allies like you, how much stronger is our crew? Let us brave the seas together, friend. Now, the choice is made. It is time to add your name to our roles. Make your way to Maelstrom Command back in Rimsa. Gear yeah, that we do. Oop, bugger. Did it again. God damn it. The duty of a Maelstrom soldier can be both arduous and challenging, but I promise you, you will not regret this choice. May your passage be swift and your bearings sure. Company, keep Maelstrom. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll end the episode here. Next episode, uh, we'll keep going with the uh, the main story quest. Now, just a reminder, next episode will be the only episode for the week. Um, it'll be a little bit expanded, but it won't be drastically overblown. Um, so, look forward to that. Anyway, in the meantime, see you in the next episode.